Hi everyone. So let us start this. What about PG dates? Uh, we are also waiting eagerly for that. You know? Let us see how the things turn out. Okay. So welcome back to this uh, cancer series. And I will be starting with again a very important cancer. And many of you know about this cancer that is CA esophagus, but many of you find it tough. Yeah. How many of you find it tough? Yeah. Yes. Chalo. So let us start with this uh, session on CA esophagus. Let us start with this session on CA esophagus. And you can yes enjoy now 35,000 plus curated questions on this platform of an academy. Okay. So the heading that we put is C esophagus. Oh my God! It's just a problem. Just a just a minute. Just a minute. Some technical problem with this uh, I pencil. Just a minute. So let us start with the session of CA esophagus. Now when we talk about the CA esophagus, there are few important things which are asked as far as the miscellaneous content is concerned. So you get a lot of miscellaneous questions also on this. What are the questions which are asked in miscellaneous uh, point of view? The most common type, the most common type on the basis of uh, histology, what is the most common type answer is? squamous cell cancer majority of them are squamous cell cancer greater than adenocele greater than adenocele yes again most common site it can occur anywhere but the mid esophagus so the middle one third the middle one third is the most common site then lower one third lower one third yes you get a lot of questions on comparison between the comparison between SCC and adenosine. Lot of questions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a comparison between two. But before that, let us see the risk factors. Okay. So SCC, SCC versus adenosine. SCC versus adenosine. Yeah. Let us see. SCC versus adenosine. So on one side we will write SCC. And on another side, we will write adenosine. Each and everything that I'm going to discuss is very important point, And it contributes a potential MCQ also. So the first thing that you should know is the site. The site of SCC is middle one third more predominant than lower one third. So middle more common than lower one third. If you talk about adenosine, it is lower one third common. Then if you talk about gender orientation, gender, both of them are male predominant. It's not like a adenosine is female predominant. Yes, both of them. Then if you talk about the geography, if you talk about the geography, this is in Asian subcontinent. So Asia is the common site for SCC. And what about adenosine? What about adeno? It is the West or you can say all those developed countries in the west there it is very common very common then let us talk about the risk factors also let us talk about the risk factors if you talk about the risk factors GERD is a very common uh, end stage GERD end stage GERD is known as Barrett's esophagus yes obesity is a very important risk factor for adenosine yes then radiation 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 important is radiation can cause both yes radiation can cause both so GERD obesity Barrett's yes radiation their common causes behind the adenosine what are the risk factors for this squamous can you tell me few smoking smoking yes achalasia Achalasia, yes, diet. Now, what kind of diet? 
what kind of diet students this is again very important a diet which is salted which is smoked or you can say pickled you can say salted smoked or you can say pickled one very important thing a diet which is deficit in what antioxidants so decrease in antioxidants decrease in antioxidants especially an agent which is known as molybdenum 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 deficiency molybdenum deficiency is again associated with so barbecue type of diets or pickle type of diets yes they are important then human papilloma virus hpv hpv is a risk factor yes again lye ingestion lye ingestion yes lye ingestion what else we have few things like i hope you must have heard of tylosis palmi tylosis palmi yes fanconese anemia fanconese anemia so fanconese anemia so lye ingestion tylosis palmi fanconese anemia they are few but not all there are others also like you must have heard of hot beverages now this is a controversial topic hot beverage it has been linked with the incidence there is a geographical incidence of increased esophageal cancer in the turkish population so there they have that special way of taking or consuming the tea that turkish tea is taken consumed at 65 degrees centigrade obviously the logic is if you take a super hotted liquid super hot liquid this will cause damage and recurrent damage if you are taking it again and again to the squamous cell epithelium so obviously there will be so there are few etc apart from that there are others also yes let us move forward next is what about the pre malignant lesions what about the pre malignant lesion if you talk about the pre malignant lesion we have barrett's barrett's is a pre malignant lesion for adenosine yes barrett's if you talk about the pre malignant lesion here you get to see dysplasia you get to see white dysplasia here what else what else now since ca esophagus is very uh, you can say very commonly seen we also have an effective screening tool also so how can you screen the ca esophagus the screening will obviously with what you cannot see esophagus you have to go inside so therefore you have to use endoscopy now endoscopy if you want to screen a tissue for cancer you have to use some special agents or stains yes and that type of endoscopy which is utilized for screening purpose is known as where you use stains this is known as chromo endoscopy so how do you do screening with the help of chromo endoscopy if you talk about the agents which are used they are again very important very important potassium iodide potassium iodide yes potassium iodide that is lugol's lugol solution yeah it's useful for scc what about this methylene blue methylene blue or you can say gentian violet gentian violet is again very important so gentian violet then similarly for oral cancers also you can use this chromo endoscopy and there we utilize what tolidine so we utilize tolidine black tolidine black for oral cancers let us move forward now next is if you want to operate what is the surgery that we do i'll discuss each and everything in details but yes just an overview of the things if you want to do opera operation what surgery do you do for mid or for the squamous cell cancer we have all the three surgeries that we do we have macnions we have macnion surgery which is tri incisional esophagectomy we have macnions apart from that students we have iver lewis we have iver lewis surgery yes you also have so iver lewis macnions what else we have oringers also we have oringers oringers but this is this is uh, you can say i should re remove this oringers because oringers is more predominantly done as a palliative procedure for this yes we use iver lewis iver lewis for adeno we use a standard of or iver lewis or you can say oringer oringer this is a trans hiatal surgery this is a trans hiatal surgery and this is only palliative why it is palliative because effective lymph node dissection cannot be done 
Next is the concept of the lymph node dissection. Because if you don't do lymph node dissection, the onco surgery will not be complete. You know, I know, everyone knows that the tumor in the the tumor in the proximal one th uh, the tumor in the upper two third region. Yes, upper two third region. They will have a vertical spread. They will have a vertical spread more than the lower spread. And tumor in the tumor in the lower one third or distal one third. Yes, they will have a caudal spread. They will have a caudal spread. So along with the local spread, there will be a vertical orientation of spread for the tumors of the upper two third and lower one third. Tumors will have a caudal spread. Yeah. So if you talk about squamous cell cancer, where majority of them will be seen in the middle part, the vertical spread is always there. The local spread to the celiac as well as the bronchial lymph node is there and therefore you go for a three field lymph node dissection. Three field lymph node dissection is mandatory for majority of the squamous cell cancer and what are these three field? First is the celiac group of lymph nodes, celiac group of lymph nodes. Second is the bronchial group of lymph nodes, the bronchial lymph nodes, yes the bronchial group and the third is, the third is your cervical group of lymph nodes cervical lymph nodes so these are the lymph nodes if we talk about if we talk uh, i'll i'll tell you i'll tell you but i'll tell you again that again uh, pratik try to understand your question i have answered your question that the lower spread the lower spread is confined uh, in the own, the caudal spread is seen in the tumors of distal one third region only there is more vertical spread in the upper two third region and that is why we take a 10 centimeter margin because 10 centimeter margin tumor free margin is sufficient margin where actually the occult lymphatic spread will not be seen and that is why the upper limit of margin for the section is 10 lower is 5 i'll discuss this later on okay so here we do a two field dissection i'm just giving an overview i'm not teaching this topic i'm giving an overview in this chart Particular management in detail, in depth, I will take it again. So two field dissection for adeno. Two field dissection for adeno. What are the two field dissections? Yes, you have to go for the local. So mediastinal group of lymph nodes or bronchial lymph, bronchial group of lymph nodes. Along with that, celiac group of lymph nodes. Why? Because lower one third will, 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 will have a caudal spread to the celiac group. So this is the basic overview of squamous versus adeno. I hope it is clear to you people and now I will move into the depth of the chapter, how we approach them, how we manage them, everything we are going to discuss here. Now when we talk about, when we talk about the CA esophagus, when we talk about CA esophagus, let us talk about their presentation. Majority of the patients, majority of the patients are having asymptomatic presentation, asymptomatic presentation. Now how are they detected then? they are detected incidentally they are detected incidentally on endoscopy so they are detected incidentally on endoscopy yes or no so patient came with intractable GERD patient underwent uh, this uh, endoscopy patient found it out then you have dysphagia then you have dysphagia as a very common presentation now dysphagia is often a late presentation it is a late presentation do you know why Try to understand if this is esophagus, esophagus lacks serosa. Since esophagus lacks serosa, the tumor tends to proliferate outer first before obscuring the lumen. Is that clear? Because of the lack of serosa, since serosa is not there, since serosa is not there, these tumors, these tumors, they tend to move out easily and go exuberantly before occluding the lumen. So try to understand dysphagia, dysphagia is often seen late in the stage. Had serosa been present, had serosa been present, yes, you would have seen dysphagia as an early presentation. Along with that, along with that, you might get to see some respiratory complications. Respiratory complications because of two, three things. Yes, because of infiltration. First thing is infiltration because of the aspiration because of the aspiration so these are the classical ways of how the patient is presenting 
and along with them along with them you have non specific presentation what do you mean by non specific presentation yes you know weight loss yes or no yes cachexia cachexia melais blah 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 all these things na melais anemia so these are the classical presentation of any cancer but apart from that the ca esophagus is not that uh, you can say not that loud that it will give you with the classical clinical features how we approach them this is very important so diagnosis diagnosis if you talk about diagnosis the investigation of choice investigation of choice is endoscopy not only endoscopy endoscopy plus biopsy this is very 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 important now try to understand for staging for staging yes or no or you can say for evaluating the extent for evaluating the extent of the tumor earlier we used to rely on ct scan mris but today we have pet ct pet ct is the investigation of choice we also try to assess the depth why is depth very important because there are tumors which are detected early and they have only the confinement to the mucosa and if it has gone to submucosal level now you want to understand whether it is the upper one third of the submucosa or the lower one third of the submucosa because if it is upper one third of the submucosa you have an option of going for endoscopic mucosal resection or maybe endoscopic submucosal dissection but if it has gone into the lower part that is infiltrated into the depth boss it has reached the lymphatic channels and you cannot treat it like an innocent child you have to go for exophagectomy in them so actually depth depth assessment is really very important for every surgeon so for depth assessment for depth assessment very good very good sanibita very good for depth assessment you have eus endoscopic ultrasound as the investigation of choice for assessment of the depth is that clear or no so now what about this barium yeah barium is done barium is done why barium is done it is a standard for dysphagia whenever you have a patient with dysphagia you often try to go for barium now i'll show you two bariums i'll show you two bariums and you try to evaluate them so this is one barium for you i'll just increase the size of this yeah i'll increase the size of this yeah so this is one barium and i will again show you one more barium i'll sh again show you one more barium try to see this barium also okay if you see if you see both of them are giving you a classical bird beak like appearance yeah bird beak like appearance but this is more like a tail of a rat this is more like a tail of a rat or someone there was an apple there was an apple this is the apple this is the apple yes and someone has eaten this apple yeah someone has eaten this apple so isn't it like an apple core yes can you see an apple core sign so this is an apple core sign yes this is a core of the apple so this is what is a classical apple core sign what is the difference between achalasia and this try to understand achalasia if you see achalasia if you see this is smooth yesterday also uh, not uh, sorry i was taking class there i have explained this this is smooth this is smooth so yesterday when i was teaching the this topic i was showing that this is a smooth yes there is no irregularities there is no irregularity and if you see this can you see this is the lumen actually you are not able to see the lumen because this is the tumor this is the tumor and that is why you have luminal irregularity and this is what is known as classical shouldering effect this is what is known as shouldering effect so you can see this this is suggestive of malignancy this is suggestive of malignancy and this is suggestive of achalasia this is suggestive of achalasia yes so these are important things yes yesterday when i was taking this topic for mch students super specialty students so i was just explaining and stressing on this point only this is how we look don't look for all those other things this is simple if you see a smooth tapering this is what is achalasia if you don't see this this is what is a malignancy always always you should clear this clear this doubt let us let us move forward now let us go for the t staging let us go for the t staging 
Now this T staging is also very important because TNM, this is very important. No? TNM is very important, very important. So T1 is further divided into T1A, this is mucosa and T1B, it is submucosa. So submucosa and mucosa. Why it is very important to remember T1A and T1B because the whole treatment will vary. The treatment will completely change, click completely change for this. Okay. <laughs> Sir, please come in app to an academy. Are, I am teaching here on academy, but I am teaching here on an academy. T2, <laughs> muscularis, muscularis, muscularis. So, T2 is muscularis, confined. Huh? T3 is outside muscle, outside muscle. Yes, outside muscle that is into adventitia. Yeah, into adventitia. Here, since there is no serosa, you cannot say this is sub serosal. T4 is local infiltration local infiltration when we talk about students local infiltration one very important thing about this is that if it is resectable if it is resectable local infiltration resectable you can resect of that structure that will be known as t4a yeah if it is if it is irresectable if it is irresectable that will be known as t4b t4b yes T4A, T4B. Now, when we talk about N, when we talk about N, what do you mean by N? N1, N1, if you talk about, is 1 to 2 lymph nodes. Number of lymph nodes are very important. N2 is defined as 3 to 6 lymph nodes. This is same staging throughout the GIT. So, that is more than sufficient for all. Yeah. N3 is defined as 7 or more lymph nodes. So this is N and M0, M1, you know, it is METS. M1 is METS. Yeah. Let us, let us move forward and let us quickly see how we manage these patients, how we manage these patients. Now, whenever we talk about, whenever we talk about the patient of CA esophagus, CA esophagus, the next thing is, the next thing is, what is the T stage of the what is the T stage? Yes. If it is it if it is T1, N0, M0, or if it is T2 and above, it is T2 and above, or or it is any T with N1 or N2, or you can say N3. So any T with N1, N2, N3. Try to understand these things. So C esophagus with T stage. T1, N0, M0, T2 and above or any T with N1, N2, N3. Now, this is very, 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 very important. But these are the, these are the patients where you actually go for NACT plus RT. NACT plus RT, neoadjuvant chemotherapy plus radiotherapy. Yes, what do you go for? You go for a doublet. You go for a doublet of cisplatin. You go for a doublet of cisplatin or maybe you can say 5 fluorouracil what do you mean by doublet two two doses yeah 5 fluorouracil plus nowadays taxanes are gaining more popularity than the platinums here yeah? so we go for taxanes are you getting and along with that 50.6 grace radiotherapy so bache what is the what is the reason behind doing new adjuvant chemo and radio answer is to downgrade the size or downstage the tumor to make it more resectable and after that you have to go for surgery after that you have to go for surgery yes. now if you talk about a tumor being t1 n0 m0 how we evaluate this tumor this is simple and straightforward the next thing is whether it is t1 a or whether it is t1 b if it is t1 b if it is t1 b then you have to directly go for surgery. Are you getting this? Directly go for surgery. If it is T1A, if it is T1A, the next question is, is there any evidence of lymphovascular invasion? That you have to confirm with EUS. Lymphovascular invasion? Answer could be yes. There is evidence of lymphovascular invasion. That means that staging was not right because lymphatics are present only at the level of submucosa. But if it is found, then you will go for surgery. 
If it is no lymphovascular invasion, you will go for EMR. What do you mean by EMR? Endoscopic mucosal resection. Endoscopic mucosal resection. This is very, very, very important. So this is how we approach a CA esophagus. So T2 and above any T with N1, N2, N3. I hope this much part is clear and that I will go for, then I will go for next. But say, try to understand Vidyananda. There are a lot of regimens. There are a lot of regimens. If you talk to a medical oncologist, he will tell you new, new, new drugs, 15, 20, 30 drugs. But all of them, I'm telling about the most popular ones that 5 fluorouracil and taxanes, they are the most popular one. I hope this much part is clear. Now the question is surgery. Sir, what surgery to be done? What surgery to be done? Now this depends, what surgery needs to be done depends upon where the tumor is, where the tumor is. So this depends upon the site. Now if the site of the tumor could be either cervical esophagus, cervical esophagus, LVI stands for lymphovascular invasion, lymphovascular invasion, lymphovascular invasion. Is that clear or no? Because if lymphovascular invasion is there, that means it was never a T1A. Okay, let us move forward. So it could be cervical esophagus, it could be thoracic esophagus, thoracic esophagus or it could be a G junction tumor. It could be G junction. Bhai, yehi do teen site hote? Yes or no? Yes. If you talk about cervical esophageal cancer, cervical esophageal cancer, first of all, where, what do we mean by? Answer is, it is C6 to T1, C6 to T1 or you can say, sir, from the level of pharynx, from pharynx up to the thoracic inlet, up to the thoracic inlet, this is what is known as cervical esophagus. Students, if it is at the level of cervical esophagus, the surgery that we do is, Pharyngo, you have to remove the pharynx. So pharyngo, then laryngeal, pharyngo, laryngeal, esophagectomy. Can you even expect the, can you even think about what level of morbidity you will have after the surgery? Yes, all, yes, vocal cords lost, everything lost. The morbidity is going to be very high and therefore, therefore remember, the treatment of choice for cervical esophageal cancer is not surgery, it is radiotherapy. Stereotactic, you know that squamous cell cancers are fairly radiosensitive and that is why stereotactic, today we have a lot of improved radiotherapies. Na? So stereotactic radiotherapy is what we prefer. Surgery is not preferred because of the enormous morbidity associated with this. Next is. When we talk about thoracic esophagus, the next question is where in thorax? It could be upper thoracic esophagus. What do you mean by upper thoracic esophagus? This is from thoracic inlet, from the level of thoracic inlet up to the level of what? Azygus. Up to the level of azygus or you can say carina. Yes or no? Up to the level of azygus and carina. Yes. For them, the surgery that we do is McNeon's triincisional surgery. McNeons. What is McNeons? We make three incisions. We do a left. We do a uh, we do a left cervical, right posterolateral, and then upper medius, upper abdominal. Yeah, upper abdominal, vertical, basically. That is laparotomy like incision. So McNeons. We make three incisions. Three incisions. Next, is, second is usually I take CA esophagus for at least two three hours in my routine class. But this is a crisp revision session, so I will have to go very quick, but not missing the important things I hope you are getting. So middle one third, if you talk about, if the tumor is in the middle uh, thoracic esophagus, now what is this middle thoracic esophagus? Answer is from the level of, uh, you can say, a zygous vein, from the level of a zygous vein up to the level of inferior pulmonary vein. Inferior pulmonary vein, this is known as middle esophagus and for them, we go for Ivor Lewis. Ivor Lewis. You also call Ivor Lewis as Lewis Tanner. Ivor Lewis, you make two incisions. One is the thorax, so mediastinal thoracotomy, and then the upper abdominal midline vertical. Upper abdominal midline vertical. The third one that you make is the third one, third one that you do is for the lower thoracic esophagus. Lower thoracic esophagus. 
and what is the extent of lower thoracic esophagus it is from inferior pulmonary vein inferior pulmonary vein up to the level of what yes crust of the diaphragm and students remember here again you prefer to go for iver lewis surgery iver lewis surgery transital that is oringer's transital i have already told you that's a part of palliation we don't do we don't do it for regular patients because you cannot do a lymphatic dissection for them i hope this part is clear now we are left with surgery for g junction tumor yeah so surgery for g junction tumor when we talk about this is again very interesting very 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 interesting now g junction is a hot topic of confusion among students and that is why examiners are keen to ask questions on this because this is a no man's land like kashmir india says that it is our our ancestry pakistan says no it belongs to us so there is always a fight yeah they try to claim pakistanis try to claim that in their own geography india get the name but actually kashmir was an independent independent place yeah and it was the decision of the king there to just uh, just be a part of this indian democracy so this keeps on this this is an endless fight and this is a topic not to discuss but g junction is that same thing esophagus says it belongs to us it belongs to us and stomach says it belongs to us so therefore there was intervention done by seward and we have a classification which is known as a seward classification let us talk about the seward's classification which is very 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 important seward's classification if we talk about seward's classification <laughs> okay 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 nik no i'm just uh, don't take it personally i'm not like ki bhai there is always a fight there is always a fight like ki bhai kashmir jaye to jaye kaise kashmir is like a troubled cat yes or no let them decide where they want to be wherever they are happy let human let man hum, that mankind should live with all the happiness yes or no there is not this is all political drama you know on both the sides of the border it's a political drama just to create a fuss yeah anyways i'm sorry if i touched a very matlab sensitive issue i'm very sorry for that i apologize for that okay next is next is if you talk about this g junction let us see let us see this is g junction this is g junction so if you talk about this g junction this g this is the g junction so what is this g junction related tumors what is the zone which belongs to them yeah answer is sir 5 cm above the g junction up to 5 cm below the g junction this is the zone which is which is controversy yes this is the zone which is controversy 5 cm always people have been fighting so this is plus 5 and this is minus 5 i am trying to label it yeah so let us consider this g junction at 0 so plus 5 plus 5 to plus 2 this zone is known as zone 1 this is known as zone 1 plus 5 to plus 2 then i'm sorry i'm sorry just wait okay plus 5 to plus 1 and here up to minus 2 this is zone 2 this is zone 2 and minus 2 to minus 5 this is zone 3 so what do you mean by zone 1 remember 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 zone 1 is this is above g junction this is above g junction zone 2 is at g junction at g junction and zone 3 is below g junction below g junction yes below g junction in india also now we also want to get rid of these topics we want some development yeah bhai theek hai let's stop fighting na stop this chaos anyways so type 1 is above g junction remember type 2 is the is at g junction and type 3 is below g junction now how do we manage them how do we treat them yes or no? how do we treat them if you talk about zone 1 tumors they are treated treated like ca esophagus they are treated like ca esophagus yes or no and therefore therefore esophagectomy therefore esophagectomy is the call for them is that clear zone 3 of the seawards they are treated like ca stomach they are treated like ca stomach and therefore 
total gastrectomy total gastrectomy is what we go for yes or no now if you talk about type 2 now this is again a trouble here you have to assess the growth pattern you have to see the growth pattern so assess the growth pattern remember if the growth pattern is towards esophagus if it is towards esophagus you actually actually do esophagectomy for them if it is towards the stomach if it is towards the stomach yes you go for gastrectomy for them are you getting this or no any problem with this so in a layman's language i've just tried to simplify the management i've just tried to simplify the management what is the management how we manage how we manage it simple 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 the first thing is you assess the t if it is t1 if it is t2 and above or if it is any t with lymph nodes if there are t with lymph nodes always go for a neoadjuvant chemo plus radiotherapy after that you go for surgery if it is t1 then assess whether it is submucosal or mucosal because if it is mucosal you can go for emr if it is submucosal you have to go for formal esophagectomy now what surgery needs to be done this again depends a lot where the site is cervical esophagus thoracic esophagus or whether it is g junction remember cervical esophagus the operative operative morbidity is very high and hence we rely on stereotactic radiotherapy is that clear for thoracic always we do a surgery for upper thoracic macneons otherwise iber lewis is the call for g junction we follow the sieverts concept which says how we have to see we divide it into the three zones one is above the g junction two is at the g junction and three is below g junction do you know that majority of the thoracotomies that we do for the patients of ca stomach they are right the only indication of left left posterolateral thoracotomy is the sievert one remember we approach sievert one tumors from left not from the right otherwise majority of the places we approach the tumor from the right hand side so this is an advanced form advanced knowledge which is yes important for the all the students who are teaching who are taking the class uh, for the super speciality ki left thoracotomy left posterolateral thoracotomy is done for sieverts one patient yes after this once you have done once you have done surgery sometimes sometimes you need a esophageal replacement yes so how do you do esophageal replacement esophageal replacement the esophageal replacement we have a lot of choices we have a lot of choices like we have a choice of stomach we have a choice of colon we have a choice of jejunum all of them have their advantages and disadvantages remember there was an era there was an era when we where there was an era when we used to talk about the colon why colon because colon is having the best peristalsis in them yes best peristalsis and it is the best it should have been the best option but the problem is that you require a lot of anastomosis when you will do a colonic pull up whenever you do a colonic pull up suppose you are getting a colon here yes you are getting a colon here so what are the anastomosis that you need to do try to understand one anastomosis one anastomosis will be the coloesophageal one will be the cologastric so coloesophageal cologastric and then the colon the part from where the you have taken out the colon this will be colocolic anastomosis so because you need to do a you need to do three anastomosis the colon pull up the colon pull up over the time losses importance now what is the important yes it is the stomach this is the most preferred it is not the best it is the most preferred why because this is the esophagus and if you want to get the stomach up you just need to create a what gastric tube you just need to create a gastric tube and only one anastomosis is required so when we talk about gastric tube when we talk about the gastric tube this is very 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 important how this gastric tube is created remember this gastric tube is created along the this is created along the greater curvature this is created along the greater curvature now this is very 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 important very important how you do like you must have seen we do a what sleeve gastrectomy similarly 
you start firing in this case you don't you start firing along the uh, just wait just wait okay okay so in this case you fire the stapler along the greater curvature not along the lesser curvature you fire the stapler along the greater curvature and not along the lesser curvature and this is how you create a gastric tube so ultimately ultimately the staple line will be like this the staple line like will be like this and you will remove this part you will remove this part yeah so the stomach which is created the stomach which is created will be along the greater curvature Remember the advantage is the advantage is the single anastomosis. The single anastomosis is the advantage. Next question that you or the important point during surgery you should remember is this is based on this gastric tube is based on right gastroepiploic. So don't damage this vessel. This is right gastroepiploic. Right gastroepiploic. Sometimes it depends whether it is present or no. Sometimes it may also be present on it may be also be harvested on right right gastric right gastric remember right gastric artery and right gastroepiploic artery they are the main blood supply to the gastric tube gastric tube jejunum has always been used in the treatment of what gastric reflux etc whenever you have na intractable post gastro jejunostomy ascites you used to interpose this jejunal loop or used to reverse to create that slowing effect so jejunum can be used and whenever you use jejunum so you use a loop interposition loop or interposition graft you can use it anyways you can use a jejunum you can use a loop or you can use an interposition graft but when you use interposition graft of jejunum only like you were doing it for colon you were doing for jejunum this surgery is known as meridino surgery this is known as meridino surgery or meridino grafting so this is very important as far as the ca stomach uh, ca esophagus is concerned now there are two three important things how to manage advanced advanced ca esophagus advanced means metastatic now the problem is okay you know i know everyone knows that since it is a metastatic cancer the days are numbered but the problem is the patient will not be able to eat anything yes patient will not be able to eat anything and that is why you have to do something to palliate of the symptoms there is a myth there is a myth that there are people who do a feeding gastrostomy or feeding jejunostomy they think that by doing a feeding gastrostomy by doing a feeding gastrostomy they can easily supply the food to the stomach and maintain the nutrition yes or no but try to understand one very important thing that the growth is it is at the level of esophagus yes all the saliva all the saliva that is going to collect will be going into the trachea also yes or no and therefore therefore the patient will have a very 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 severe type of aspiration and the life expectancy will be shortened because of this aspiration but if that is the reason you like it or you don't like it you have to put what you have to put stents you have to put stents so this is all these feeding gastrostomy feeding jejunostomy they are absolutely contraindicated because the the logic behind management of advanced cancers is palliation and what do you mean by palliation if you cannot add days to the patient's life try to add colors the last day should go in comfort the advantage of this is via stent the liquids can pass the liquids can pass and via this stent the saliva can also pass and get cleared off therefore scms self expanding metal stents self expanding metal stents they are placed self expanding metal stents if you read literature there are a lot of things like you can go for photoablation laser ablation debulking esophagectomies which they are all irrational and their long term effects have not been proven today we prefer to choose scms that is self expanding metal stents and a big drawback a question is asked on drawback also answer is stent migration stent migration the stent dislodgement is a very common very common very common side effect stent migration apart from that these fjs fgs they are absolutely contraindicated absolutely in terms of prognosis if you talk to me if terms of prognosis prognosis if you talk to me 
CA esophagus, if it is SCC, it is always associated with poor prognosis. It is associated with poor prognosis. And if it is adeno CA, yes, it is associated with good prognosis. Good prognosis. But till stems are always they are put under the conscious sedation. They are put under conscious sedation. Like you do endoscopy, up here. You just patient is conscious. If the patient is cooperative, you don't give any anesthesia apart from this buccal spray of what? Lignocaine. Otherwise, if the patient is not cooperative, then you can give midas, midazolam. Yes, you can give midazolam and that is why. But a gastroenterologist, radiologists don't do anything except for the x-rays, uh, except for the ultrasound and MRIs, etc. I have not seen radiologists doing this. You yourself can do. You are a surgeon. You take an endoscope. Endoscopy is very easy. Endoscopy is very easy. You have to understand the basics of endoscopy. Like at my center, we are also we are also starting an endoscopy fellowship also where you will get hands on. So you will realize that majority of the, you can say the best Endos you can say endoscopist in country. They are all surgeons. Yes or no? We are doing ERCP for our own patients. Why will we call gastroenterologists? Yeah. You know, there is nothing like a gas surgeon cannot do. There are nothing because now and nowadays we are the, the, the concept of surgery, the incision is being becoming small, 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 and there are more and more interventions which are endoscopically done. So let's say a gastroenterologist, they have a fear that if I perforate the wall of the duodenum, if I perforate this, what will happen? As you are a surgeon, boss, you know if you perforate, you will always have a patient in the OT, landing up in the OT and you do the laparotomy and repair. That is why majority of the best endoscopist, intervention endoscopist, if you talk about, they are all surgeons in the country. I am not going to name them. There are a lot of people, yes. And there is nothing like you cannot do. Even you can do. Endoscopy is so easy. Yes, there are a lot of fellowships. You can take a small fellowship and do and expand and placing a stent is really very easy task. Very hardly it takes 15, 20 minutes. 10 minutes. Yes. Definitely, definitely you can always come to India. You can come, you can join my institute and yes, you'll always have a good hands-on training. Yesterday only I did a very, very complicated case of amyant hernia. Amyant hernia with acute appendicitis. Acute appendicitis with amyant hernia. Like I have seen this case for the first time when the cecum and the appendix have gone into the paracolic gutter, made a cave there and that when you know when appendix is the content, that's what it is an amyant hernia. So patient presented with acute appendicitis, we did the surgery in this and that. And the things were so I will be posting that video also on YouTube very soon. I was general surgery post branch, but it's very bad. <laughs> it's very bad. Try to understand that all the branches post COVID. This is the scenario of most of the hospital. Like my own hospital is having today, we are having only four patients. Yeah, four patients. I have a 30 bed hospital right now where I am sitting. So we had only four patients because majority of them I admit only surgical patients in my center. And the the number of surgeries in the pre-COVID eras were like uh, 70 to 80 per month. Yeah. And just after the COVID, it's like 10 days have passed this month and I have been able to do only 12 surgeries. So this is, yeah, there is a difference. There is a difference. Let us hope for the best. Surgery is always the most affected branch after COVID. Yes. Chalo. Okay. Recent advances in esophagus, like this is a revision class, so I will not take in this, but I will definitely take a recent advances for all the cancers. Let me tell you, uh, the as we as we talk about the recent advances nowadays, the gene profiling has been brought into the C A esophagus also C A colon also, and uh, like like we use it for C A breast, we want to be more and more conservative. Like for tumors, we require post surgery chemotherapy, and chemotherapy is associated with a lot of toxicities. So nowadays we are analyzing the tumors at the levels of at the level of genes. So that we can evaluate the genetic framework and we can see whether this tumor actually requires this patient actually requires post-surgery chemotherapy and that is the reason why we have started evaluating the genes so there are a lot of therapies which are based on these genes that yes if there is positivity of these genes will go for these chemotherapy therapies or no but still for esophagus it is still under a trial but for ca colon uh, for uh, CA breast, they are very popular. Like you must have heard for course for oncotype DX. Yes, oncotype DX. Yes, and when we talk about oncotype DX, oncotype DX, it's a 21 gene study for breast. Same is a 12 gene study. Same is the 12 gene study for uh, you can say for colon. 
like you have colon if when you talk about ca colon yes i'll teach this in ca colon we have mama mama print yes that is for breast 70 gene here we have colo print which is a which is, which is an 18 gene study so i'll discuss all these things when we go to say colon and rectum or ca rectum particularly so i hope that was helpful for you and i'll be uploading more i'll be taking more sessions on cancers for you is to start screening for ca esophagus bache whenever a patient is having gerd patient should go and undergo annual annual endoscopy until and unless there are two consecutive negative endoscopies is that clear shape two endos uh, two endoscopy should come negative yes or no at least annually you should go for endoscopy every year you should go until unless the pre malignant lesion the suspicious lesions like majority of the time you see barrets you see barrets and when we talk about inicity postponed when just now varun has it been postponed just now when we talk about barrets you get that salmon salmon color or typical pinkish mucosa whenever you see this pinkish pinkish mucosa on the so on, on you can say on this endoscopy you should always have a thing because bachche there are two concept of esophagitis one is erosive one is non erosive when we talk about non erosive many a times what happen biliary reflux comes along with the acid acid will neutralize the pancreatic juices of the bile biliary reflux and the bile will neutralize bile will neutralize the pepsin part of the so ultimately the erosion of the esophagus doesn't happen here but the bile salts which have been precipitated they infiltrate the mucosa and they cause a deeper damage so whenever you deal with a patient of reflux don't be overwhelmed that you have not seen anything or you have seen everything they can be more dangerous in disguise so whenever we talk about the ca esophagus or any esophagus evaluated for dysphagia you always see that if you have any suspicion take a biopsy if you don't have continue endoscopies until unless you get two normal endoscopies yes so those who have still not joined my telegram group you can join my telegram group my telegram group is surgery dada sx dada sx space dada this is my telegram group sx space dada and same is my youtube channel yes you can why i don't put all the videos on youtube because i have kept my special videos all those special tough cases for my routine classrooms and also for the residency program because i need to give them some exclusivity also yes or no and that is why i don't put up all the videos on uh, youtube there are a lot of uh, privacy concerns in those videos also so nahi karte that is the reason that is the only reason i don't put all my videos otherwise i have very strange and very good cases like this is a case of amine sarnia if i put i i'll fetch a lot of likes but i am not a person who is only matlab aspiring about the likes yes there are some things like the residents will come for the training and there i'll show them these kinds of typical cases and they will definitely have a better cutting edge over the others yes or no there should be something exclusive yeah but see it's it's my lifestyle it's my lifestyle i'm happy i'm happy <laughs> i'm always happy uh, with my life you have to be passionate because the only reason is if you are passionate about your branch you will never regret it like surgery is a branch where you actually many a times you actually feel that you should have not gone because there is always a chaos if a patient dies if there is any injury during the surgery you often feel like oh my god what will happen now what will happen now? and that fear makes you more troubled but when you are passionate you are obsessed about surgery surgery karni hai to karni hai yes then you start loving that thing similarly is the case with teaching also like i love to teach now the best part i'm very thankful to one academy these people are so humble that they have allowed me to practice also so i practice i run my own hospital i teach in my own hospital just see and the clinical and educational integration that gives me an upper hand yes okay so uh, let us uh, let us just conclude this class we will tomorrow meet again at 11 and tomorrow i think i'll be taking the class on uh, ca rectum basically ca rectum yeah ca rectum so colorectal cancer yes yeah, it will it is going to be very interesting class so please uh, stay connected ha huh? okay till then bye 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 bye, bye.